I'm going to be working on this beautiful bomb chest, which I picked up on Marketplace for £60. It's not an original, it's a modern reproduction. And the previous owners tell me that they've painted it twice, once in Empress Silk and um, now Nap Napoleonic Blue, I think it is. Um, but it looks great as it is, but it's just not my style. I really want to give this more of an original feel. So I'm going to take you through the steps that I might take when I'm painting over a previous painted piece. And we're going to add some more embellishments and have real good fun with this project. So let's take a closer look at the actual piece of furniture. Okay guys, before we start all of the creative part of re-realizing this piece of furniture, I do need to cover off a little bit about preparation on a previously painted piece of furniture. Now, if you're not sure what lies on the surface of your piece of furniture, then I would give it a good old sand and go back in with a stain blocking primer, something like Zinza 123. This piece of furniture I'm really lucky with. I know that it's had a couple of layers of Annie Sloan chalk paint and a wax finish. Now you can paint straight back over with Annie Sloan chalk paint over a wax surface. It is good to go. Um, a couple of things that I would say about your project, if it is chalk paint on the surface, something like a chest of drawers, be mindful of the edges. You will get build up over time with layers of chalk paint and it could chip off on the edges with the traction of the drawer. So go round with the sandpaper around any sharp edges and then that will really key it up for the next layer of paint. I'm not gonna do it on this piece because it's a modern piece and there's loads of freedom in the drawers. So I hope that all makes sense. Let's get stuck into working out what we're gonna to do to change this piece of furniture up to make it look a little bit more older. So a huge part of me re-realising this piece of furniture is to try and take it back to a more original feel of a bomb chest. This is a modern reproduction and I really do feel like they got the handles wrong on this. This is based on a Victorian style handle and a bomb chest just wouldn't have had that style of handle. They would have had something a little bit more like this. So this is something that I've taken off another piece of furniture and I'm thinking I'm going to reapply this handle to the chest here and here and also I'm going to add a little bit more embellishment with some would you bend. Now this would you bend is part of the House of Mendes range. It's one of mine which I'm really excited about and it will be the first time that I use it on a piece of furniture. So that's going to sit on this corner. I'm really frightened about this because this curve goes in about four different directions so wish me luck for that one. I might add some little key escutcheons as well. I'm hoping that these extra bits will really push this back in time and make it look a little bit more older. So let's start with um, cutting the wood you bends down and making them fit this super curvy aperture. I'm removing my wood you bend from its packaging. As you can see, this one comes as a pair. The code number for this particular design, which is House of Mendez range, is 6003. I've made a faint line down the underside of the center of the molding, and I'm scoring through the middle section and then taking out a 45 degree angle, making sure not to go all the way through to the front surface. This material needs to go because it will help the wood you bend fold in half. So it will fit that beautiful curvy edge of the cabinet. I'm gonna repeat the process on the second corbel and we're gonna heat the whole thing up and get ready to fold it in several directions.
I'm sanding the areas where I will be applying the wood U-bends. This is just to key up the surface ready for application of glue. And of course, I'm heating them up really, really well so they are nice and flexible so that I can fold them shut and bend them around those super curvy edges. I decided to jump out and grab my blade at this point. There was a little lip at the top, which I had removed one part already, but it wasn't sitting underneath the trim. So I went back in with my blade, removed the material that I didn't want and slotted it under, which really helped to hold this down underneath that top lip whilst I molded the other edges with my hands further down. So that's all of the wood you bends and handles in place. I'm really happy with the way that this is looking. I'm gonna move on to applying a canvas coat of paint to the whole piece of furniture. This time I'm gonna actually wax after I've applied this coat. The reason being, I do not want any of the blue to come through if I do a paint effect, which 
I haven't decided on where I'm going to go with that. I've got a couple of ideas for colours, maybe a bit of pink and some stone on the top maybe and gold. I'm thinking, I don't know. This is the um, canvas coat that I'm, I'm going to apply. This is a colour dump. Now I save all of my chalk paint when I mix colours. I save them in containers and I've had a clear out in my cupboard and I decided to dump all of the colours and this is what I got. It's, it's similar to en fleur, a little bit like French linen, but I thought it'd be a really good colour to sit deep beneath any paint effect that I'm going to do. So let's get the first coat onto the piece and see how it looks. So that's the wax over the whole piece. I've really given it a good old buff to push that wet wax into the substrate of the chalk paint, which means it will be good to go with a next layer of paint. I'm gonna treat the top half and the bottom half slightly different. We're gonna go full on Italianate Palazzo at the bottom. And ordinarily I would go for a marble finish on the top because that kind of works with this style of furniture, but I'm gonna have a little bit of fun and create something that is a stone, kind of textured with stone and patina on the top. And we're gonna go full on faded grandeur at the bottom, creating lots of anomalies and make it look really interesting. So let's get stuck in with the top surface. 
Okay guys, so I have to be completely honest with you when it comes to creating this stone effect, I was completely winging it and having a lot of fun. So I'm gonna give you a running commentary of what happened. So I went in with a base coat of Paris Grey. I kept this kind of moist with my atomizer and then picked up some salt wash and sprinkled it into the surface. I did this a couple of times and then I used the back of my brush to pat the salt wash into the paint. Then I went back with my heat gun just to take the wetness away from that layer of paint and I picked up another colour which was Country Grey, which I think Country Grey is an awesome colour for stone. It looks absolutely fabulous. I went over the whole surface once again and then picked up a little bit of French linen in went in in diagonals and then again more salt wash kind of patting it down and spreading it out with a soft bristle brush just to soften the edges of the two colors blending which i felt was working really well so i went back in with a darker shade i picked up the color from the base of the cabinet and went in my diagonals again over the surface and softened away with my brushes. Again, I was going back in with a little bit of heat, semi drying the surface, and then picking up more of the country gray to lighten areas. This is a little bit like my marbling technique, but of course the salt wash was adding really good texture. So I decided to go back in again with a little bit more salt wash. The layers were kind of building and it looked really fabulous. Once everything had thoroughly dried, I went back over the surface with an Annie Sloan sanding pad in course. I did make sure to keep away from the edges. I didn't want to distress the edges of the cabinet top, but I went through most of the center, just removing all of those different layers, creating lots of speckles and dots. I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. It was trial and error. I think it was a good call. All that's left to do with this is give this a wax to protect this from the paintwork at the bottom. I will go back and use a damp cloth and tidy up some of the paint splashes on the surface. It's got the wax on, so you can just take it off with a damp cloth. If it doesn't all come off, I'm not gonna worry because it's gonna be a kind of a hot mess at the bottom as well. So let's pop some wax on the top surface see this come to life. So I've decided that I'm gonna go with a Scandinavian color on the lower half. I'm gonna make a mix actually. Scandinavian pink is a very muted pink and I love it, but I want to knock it back just a little bit more. And I'm gonna use olive to do that because it's kind of on the opposite side of the color wheel. So it will neutralize the pinkness in that tone. Also, we're gonna do a color wash over the top of that to distress it. Hopefully we'll come back a little bit like the um, stone top. We'll come back to some of this brown underneath. And also we're gonna mix up a kind of an olivey brown. Again, maybe we'll use this same base color with a little bit of olive over all of the gold details. I kind of wanna make a really paired back gold. And then we will probably add a touch of um, some posh chalk um, pigments mixed in with some chalk paint. I really wanna knock that color back. But we'll see, it's evolving as it goes. It's one of those projects that I'm really enjoying doing and I'm thinking on my feet. So I'm just gonna take you along on that journey. Let's get mixing Scandinavian pink up. We're gonna put this on, on in an any what way. So some areas slightly thicker than others. So when we distress it, it will come back in a really authentic way.
Now I'm picking out all of the areas that I want to be gold and I'm going in with a base colour. Once again, I've used my brown and added some olive to that, which I think this colour is an awesome pared down vintage gold colour in its own right. But I will be going back over with some posh chalk pigments to brighten that gold up. Mixing up some posh chalk pigments, I'm using my favourite all-time colour, which is Byzantine Gold. Also, I'm adding a little bit of my paint mix to that, just to knock it back a little. And I'm applying it to the surface, but only the top parts of the detail. I'm allowing some of the original colour underneath to show through on all of the detailed areas. So I'm now on day two of my project. As you can see, all of the paintwork's dry and it looks absolutely glorious. You could just use clear wax and a touch of dark wax at this stage if you like that more cleaner look. But not for me, I love the age old patterners, lots of distressing, so we're gonna do that right now. We're gonna add some color washes and distress it back and hopefully come back to that brown color underneath. Fingers crossed. So let's start mixing up a couple of colour washes. I'm going to use something slightly different this time. I'm going to add some warmth to my colour wash and see what we get. Okay, for my colour wash, I've decided to go with my brownie tone again. The um, colour dump that I had for the base coat, I'm going to use that paint, waste not, what not. And I'm also going to use a touch of primer red. I think I can pep up the pinkiness of the piece just in slight areas. So we're going to have the dark colours in all of the details and a little bit of primer red. It will be great fun. So mixing up colour washes, there's no direct science to this. The more paint that you put in, the, the less opacity you will have. So I like my colour washes about, I would say about... 70% um, water to paint um, or thereabouts. As you'll see, I'm just gonna eyeball it. So I'm gonna put some of this paint into a container and then we're gonna top it up with water. And mix in. So you really want a, a really runny mix of paint. I've mixed up quite a lot, just in case. You don't want to really run out and have to mix up any more colour wash. I also, if you notice, I've got a bucket of water. 
I'll be using the water with um, a cloth. So we're gonna have a damp cloth, that'll be in there. Um, that will be your tool to distress. I always have a wet cloth and a dry cloth on hand. The bucket of water is there for um, cleaning your cloth. So once you um, build up with paint on here, you can rinse it out, offload the paint that you've got. So that's whereabouts that I want my colour wash. Also keep steering your colour wash because the water and the paint will separate. I'm not gonna mix up as much of the primer red. I don't need so much of this. So I'm just gonna put a little bit into a bowl. This is just really for a nuance of colour. Let's pop some water in there. Mix that in. I'm being really brave with this colour choice, but I think it'll work. Just in a few areas. So there we go, that's our colour wash. Now, because my piece has had overnight to dry, um, I would not normally do that. I would work a couple of hours after drying, um, after the chalk paint is fully dried on the surface. It will be tougher to remove any of the um, Scandinavian pink tone on the top because it's, it's cured a little bit overnight. So we're gonna get what we're gonna get. I'll see how well this works. Um, plenty of water will break down the paint and it should distress it really lovely. So the first thing I'm going to do with this, I am going to go over with a spritz of water. This will start breaking down that layer of chalk paint. So it's going to reactivate the chalk paint. Give it a good old spritz all over. It's a super warm day. It's the hottest heat we've had in the UK ever today. So I do need to keep plenty of water and moisture going as I'm working. Right, how I'm gonna tackle this is, I'm gonna go with my brown in the detail area. So I'm gonna go straight over the corbels. Now I'm hoping with the mix of um, posh chalk pigments and the infuser, it will just resist anyway. I'm not too sure until I get that on. Um, there is slight areas where I left of the chalk paint, so we'll see. Also, I'm gonna go with the dark around any connections and then probably pop the primer red just here and there in the sort of larger area. So let's pop this colour wash on. It is messy guys, you're just going to have to trust me on this. Um, all over, you just need to saturate. Look, we're going to go in with this primer red sort of here. We'll pop some in there, just a few areas just to add a little bit of brightness to that pink. Make sure you get into all of your detailed areas. It will look a hot mess before it gets better. I am going to do the whole piece. I like to work over the whole piece for continuity. Don't worry about this, it's got wax on so we can clean that up afterwards. Let's get some primer red on this side. I'm 
working as fast as I can. Really kind of want to get one runny thick coat on all over. No rhyme or reason, just literally get the paint on. And then we're gonna come back in with more water and our cloth to remove some of this paint buildup. So that's how it should look, kind of a real hot mess. And now I'm just gonna give it another quick spritz, loosen that paint up. Ordinarily, I wouldn't do so much wet stuff on here, coming back in with the spritz because it's the heat that we've got here today. So I'm just doing it to make sure that my paint doesn't dry too quickly. So we're going in now with our bucket of water, pop that there. And this is just a cotton cloth. That's all it is, cotton. And, and what I'm gonna do is scrunch it into a little sort of flower kind of textural. And we're gonna start just tapping this on a little bit like rag rolling remove some of that buildup of paint. Um, the idea by using a cloth, it, it gives you a more organic um, patina rather than um, something with like a brush or you don't want brush match, you want something that's organic that doesn't look like anything that you would recognize. So a cloth is usually good for me. You could use a sponge, Something else like a sponge would work really well. And the idea is we're gonna tr really try and break down to the pink. So don't worry, this is how it should look. Just slowly, slowly does it, making sure that you get a nice even pass. A little bit of a crevice there that I missed. That's fine.
So whilst I've been waiting for my paint to dry, I've had a little clean around the workshop ready for my wax coats on my project. I'm gonna be using Anisome Clear Wax over the whole piece, and I'm gonna go in with a touch of dark wax just to certain apertures around the drawers. Now, dark wax for me is much better for this style of project. You could use black wax, but it can be a little heavy. Um, and this has got more of a translucency and a warmer tone to it, so it will really work well with this colour. And also I'm gonna go in with a touch of Posh Chuck Patina. Now this one is Byzantine Gold, the very same colour that I mixed up in the pigments on the corbels. So this will be a very light touch. I really like the way that they're looking right now. I just want to add a touch of sparkle, not too much. Remember, this is all about keeping it pared down. That's just about all for today's tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed this one as much as I did creating it. And if you're new here and you haven't yet subscribed, please do. I'm always at the other end of a message for any information that you might find in my tutorials. <laughs>